Claude Haiku is one of the fastest and most affordable vision-capable models in the world. To demonstrate this, we're going to read through thousands of scanned documents in a matter of minutes. The Library of Congress Federal Writers Project is a collection of thousands of scanned transcripts from interviews during the Great Depression. This is a goldmine of incredible narratives and real-life heroes, but it's locked away in hard-to-access scans of transcripts. Imagine you're a documentary filmmaker or journalist. How can you dig through these thousands of messy documents to find the best source material for your research without reading them all yourself? Since these documents are scanned images, we can't feed them into a text-only LLM, and these scans are messy enough that they would be a challenge for most dedicated OCR software. But luckily, Haiku is natively vision-capable and can use surrounding text to tra transcribe these images and really understand what's going on. We can also go beyond simple transcription for each interview and ask Haiku to generate structured JSON output with metadata like title, date, keywords, but also use some creativity and judgment to assess how compelling a documentary the story and characters would be. We can process each document in parallel for performance, and with Claude's high availability API, do that at massive scale for hundreds or thousands of documents. Let's take a look at some of that structured output. Haiku is able to not just transcribe, but pull out creative things like keywords. We've transformed this collection of many, many scans uh, into rich keyword structured data. Imagine what any organization with a knowledge base of scanned documents, like a traditional publisher, healthcare provider, or law firm can do. Haiku can parse their extensive archives and bodies of work. We'd love for you to try it out and see what you build. Simple prompt to turn Sonnet into a dialogue agent that will talk with you in a language that you're trying to learn. So I chose Spanish and I wanted it to basically take my imperfect Spanish and, and help me improve it. Um, so I decided I wanted it to do a few things. I wanted it to take my message, which will be in kind of imperfect Spanish, um, and write out what it thinks I intended in English. I then ask it to write back the ideal learner message, which is just my message as it kind of should have been written in Spanish, so I can see the kind of ideal form of this. Uh, then I ask it to write a teacher response, which is just a response to me in Spanish, uh, so that I can continue the conversation. Great, so this is basically just Sonnet saying that we're ready to start, so I'll just start with a simple first message. And here it's following the format that I asked for. So it's repeating the message that I tried to send it back to me in English. It's telling me how I should have said it. So it's corrected some of the grammar issues in my request. Um, and then it's responded to me in Spanish. And then it's asked me uh, where I'm from. So. OK, now imagine I don't know a certain word in Spanish, but I still want to say it. I'm going to just include that word in English in square brackets, and hopefully it will just translate it back to me. And suppose I hit a roadblock because I just don't understand the message that it's sent to me. I can just ask it to translate that message to me into English, and then I can read that and I can respond to it again in Spanish, continuing the dialogue. In this video, we're going to see if Claude and a couple of friends can help us analyze the world economy in a matter of minutes. OK, I've asked Claude 3 Opus, which is the largest model in Anthropic's new Claude 3 family, to look at the GDP trends for the US and write down a markdown table of what it sees. We've given Opus and all the other models in the Claude 3 family extensive training on tool use, and one of the major tools it's using is this web view tool. It goes to a URL, looks at what's on the page, and because it's multimodal, it can use the information on that page to solve complex problems. So here's the markdown. And it's important to note that Claude doesn't have direct access to these numbers. It's literally looking at this same browser you and I are seeing, looking at the trend line, and trying to estimate what the exact numbers are. Let's see how accurate it was. We've asked the model to create a plot of the data, and it's used this second tool, this Python interpreter, to write out the code and then render the image for us to check. And here's the image. Look, it's actually 
added helpful little tooltip animations to explain some of the major peaks and troughs in the last decade or two of the US economy. And we can compare that graph with the actual data, and it turns out it's pretty close. It's actually within 5% accuracy. And by the way, Claude's transcription here isn't just coming from its pre-existing knowledge of US GDP. We tried it with a large sample of made-up GDP graphs, and its transcription accuracy was within 11% on average.